Davin Lux. And uh, we're going to run this back. Let's try this whole thing again because last year we never quite <laughs> got to the, the starting line of the 2023 season. Gavin, uh, it's great to see you. You look healthy coming down those stairs a minute ago. I know Jerry's been out here and he's talked with you as you've worked out. We've seen some of the video clips and Jerry has raved how you've looked at shortstop. How are you feeling right now as we're getting ready to head to Arizona for spring training? Yeah, I feel great. Uh, you know, just getting out and being able to work again and, and actually getting to do baseball stuff, you know, having like six, seven months where you couldn't do anything sucked. So, uh, yeah, let's, <laughs> well, let's try to make it out of spring training alive this year, please. Let's, let's, let's get through that alive. Uh, you know, we talk about you when you were rehabbing last year. Obviously, there's an excitement to get back out there on the field. But does it excitement go up a notch when you see all the moves that the Dodgers made this offseason? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the signings, you know, trading for glass now, getting Otani, uh, Yamamoto, um, Teoscar, all these guys. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, it's a star-studded team. So anytime you can uh, suit up with those guys every single day, I mean, how can you not be excited about that, you know? You know, Gavin, you know, I want to, like, talk about the mental side of the game. I think, obviously, last season was crushing. You know, losing you for the entire uh, season not only hurt you, but it hurt our ball club. Sitting back and watching the Dodgers play, obviously it hurt. But were you able to learn and process a little bit more information? Say, you know what, when I get back out here, I can do these type of things on a field? Yeah, I, I mean, I had a lot of time where I was just sitting in the dugout watching watching these guys. So, uh, you know, days where Kirsch wasn't pitching, I'm picking his brain. I'm sitting next to him. You know, our pitching coaches, hitting guys. Like, you know, uh, it kind of gives you a different perspective when it gets taken away. So, I mean, when you can't actually physically do anything, all you can do is watch and try to learn and, and take advantage of that because you can't do anything else anyways. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I tried to do that as much as possible and, and make the most of that um, on that side of things for sure. Gavin, both Nomar and Jerry have talked about this in the past. They both had serious injuries when they played. Played Major League Baseball as well and that mental hurdle was often the last thing to come and they had to get over that and that was very difficult where are you at in terms of knowing in your mind that your knee is going to be fine because from what I understand you're still working out here at the stadium and you have a brace on totally yeah I mean I think the brace right now is more of a you know say like just precautionary like I don't need it I don't need to wear it I don't want to wear it but at this point there's no use and and not wearing it and like we just don't want any setbacks so um, but yeah, the, the mental hurdle part. Yeah, I think right now I'm, I'm almost past everything. Um, I just need to get out there and play in a game. Like I feel like that's the last piece, and and you know get out of the box, hit a double, round the base. You know everything's fine. So, uh, but it took a while to get there for sure. You know the other thing too. I know as dealing with injuries, have there been any adjustments or little tweaks you may have had to make? Maybe whether it's in the batter's box, or maybe the way you're setting up, or where, maybe the way you approach a ball, or anything like that. Or have you felt like you know what? I've kind of just got back exactly what I'm used to doing. Yeah, honestly, I feel like I've gotten back to kind of what I'm used to be uh, used to doing. But the hardest part was just like hitting into my front leg. Like, you know, we lock out on our front leg hard, and and that's a lot of um, torque on your knee. So for me, that uh, that was the hardest part. But um, I feel like truthfully, everything is is very similar. Um, it just like I said, it, it takes a while to get there. Right. Yeah, I, I would like to talk. And Gnomes obviously can attest to this as well. And you're always been a natural shortstop. That is your natural position. And going to second base, yes, it's a shorter throw, but it could be a very difficult throw because you're used to letting it go. It's kind of like a center fielder being asked to play left field. You know, kind of you're, you're handcuffed a little bit. Talk about the freedom now that you're back at shortstop and how you feel taking ground balls there and throwing what I saw rockets across the diamond. Yeah, uh, second is so much touch and feel, right? Like you can't really run through balls. Like I like playing on the run a lot. Um, I just I feel that guy like doing that too. <laughs> yeah, he has, yeah, he has a yeah. logo on this thing. Yeah. I don't think yeah. that's the paperweight with the no Paper throw weight. logo. Exactly, that's sick right the there. Run. That's that show right there. <laughs> yeah, but just like I like playing on the run a lot, and, and I feel like just so much more athletic on on that side of second base, where like you said, on second base side, like I basically tried to learn how to play it at the big league level and. Like, that's not the easiest thing to do. Um, a lot of guys can do it. I had a hard time a little bit adjusting to it right away. But, yeah, just I, overall I feel a lot more athletic on the other side of second base. We've seen you working out here at the stadium quite a bit over the last couple months. We've also seen this this guy named Shohei Otani. He's been working out here a lot. I imagine you've had a chance to get to know him. What is Shohei like? I mean, he's awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, he keeps everything super light, but when it's his time to, to get out there and, and, and work, uh, I mean, everything is with so much intent, with focus, and he's uh, he's very meticulous. So it's uh, it's really fun to watch him go through his cage routine and, and prepping to, to go out there and play. And, um, you know, I keep saying he's a freak in nature. He's 6'4", and he's the best jumper, fastest runner on the team. I mean, 
Uh, <laughs> everyone knows how good of a baseball player he is, but there's a lot that goes behind the scenes that people don't see. You know, speaking of incredible athletes and preparing and working out there, you know, you're, you're going to have an incredible athlete over there at second base over yep. there, too. Are, I don't know if you've had a chance maybe to work a little bit, you know, in the offseason, or are you looking forward to spring training and really looking forward to understanding his nuances, how you want things, and working with him up the middle? Totally. I'm excited. Uh, me and Mook got a really good relationship, so um, I haven't had a chance to, like, you know, turn any double plays with him quite yet. I've, I've been blowing his phone up trying to, trying to you know, work <laughs> on it a little bit. Uh, but I think, like, I think he said a couple days ago, like, it'll only take, like, a, a week or so to, you know, lock it in with each other, find out where he wants the ball on yeah. double plays. And um, I'm excited, man. Uh, he's, he's another one that's a freak athlete, and uh, he can do anything he wants on a baseball field. And, and then the other challenge, though, too, when you have such a sick athlete like that is also understanding their range, you know, what ball up the middle and who goes where. Yeah, totally. And but like without the shift, you don't really have to worry about it right, too much right, anymore. Right. So, um, but yeah, I mean, he's going to have as much range as anybody in baseball, yeah. I'm sure. You know, we're talking about the lineup. The lineup is awesome, <laughs> and everybody's talking about Mookie Betts, then Freddie Freeman, then Otani. But I'm excited one through nine. And you've hit ninth before. You could be that second leadoff hitter as well. Having Mookie hit behind you and then Freddie Freeman and Otani yeah. really lengthens this lineup. Totally. I mean, I think I'm going to get a lot of pitches to hit, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want to put me on base to face uh, those four, those three. So, uh, yeah, just get on base for those guys and then let them hit me in. So uh, I think I'll be doing a lot of running on, on, on the bases this year. Well, you're going to have Freddie Freeman hitting a couple spots probably right behind you. Freddie's going to be coming on shortly. He's standing by with Jason Hayward. Gavin, thank you so much for coming on, man. Best of luck in 2024. Yeah. We cannot wait to watch you this Appreciate year. Appreciate you guys, yeah, man. You thank you. It. Thanks, yep, guys. Absolutely.